Now I'd like to take a moment and talk about some of the recent experiences that I've had this month. I started teaching at the university after the national holiday, and I tried, when I was going to classes, I had in mind that I was going to be making this video and some blog posts about what it's like to teach the students. So I tried to put myself in the position of a new teacher and remember how it felt to be a new teacher in China back in 2011 at the universities. And I came up with some things that I think you would be really interested to hear about if you are planning to come to China soon to teach or have recently arrived. Um, and the first thing I picked out, the first thing I noticed, uh, the first thing I recalled was how uncomfortable it can be to be facing a big group of university students who do not really want to speak, who are so quiet. And so many teachers have said it's like pulling teeth, getting them to speak. Um, and I have forgotten over the years uh, how uncomfortable that can feel. You know, I've kind of gotten used to it and I've gotten used to dealing with it and I've learned some ways to work through it. But I remember back when I was first learning to teach in the States, how uncomfortable that could be in a room of native English speakers or even young, very young students. When you're trying to lead the class and you want them to learn and have fun and you hope they ask some questions and they're interested in things and they don't, it can be very nerve wracking and unsettling and sometimes really upsetting to teachers who don't know what to do with that situation. So the first thing I want to tell you is don't be so put off by that. Don't take it personally. Actually, the students, some of them can be painfully shy. You will see Chinese students at the university who actually shake when they stand up to try to talk to you. They actually quiver and their voice may break up a little bit. Some of them are actually so painfully shy. That's the extreme end of the spectrum. But more of them will be kind of a mass in the center of students who are so used to traditional schooling where they should be listening, reading, writing things down, and not speaking at all. There's just too many students in their classrooms. And well, that's just one of the reasons, but that's kind of the system that they're used to. So if you point at them or if you call their name to speak, that is just more of what they're used to. They will at that point stand up and try to deliver an answer to you or deliver what you want as best they can. But I think what we, um, the native English speaking foreign teachers, I think what we're trying to do is we want to get them in that mode where they are volunteering questions, volunteering answers, volunteering topics. We want to see them coming out of their shell becoming more confident and more independent. Those are some skills that we have from our school systems right now that we can bring to the table for them. So it's really important, especially in the first classes when you're setting the tone for the semester, that you have some ways to comfortably and in a funny way and in a safe way, make them happy to share some things and express themselves in front of each other. You definitely, and I have seen some teachers take this route, you definitely don't want to call out students. You don't want them, you don't want to force them to speak. That's not going to help them overcome their nervousness and their shyness by demanding students speak, by embarrassing them, by forcing them to go up in front of the classroom and do things. That's not a good way. That doesn't work. You need to have some ways that are very safe and fun and get people laughing a little bit and smiling and wanting to know each other. You have to spend a few weeks going through that and it will be a very valuable use of your time to do that. So that was the first thing going to the classes recently was remembering what that used to feel like. You're trying to give that wait time and hopefully, you know, we're taught in the West, uh, in the teaching uh, schools, we're taught give some wait time, you know, wait 10, 15, 20 seconds, just let there be silence. 
and and let a student get get up that courage to say something. Um, but here, sometimes you may wait 15, 20, 25 seconds and nobody says anything and people are putting their heads down. And when you look for someone who might be interested to say something, they immediately drop their head down and try to hide from you. Um, so that all can be very difficult. And I, I remember now what that's like. And sometimes even now that's difficult for me. So I have a tip for you today, something I was thinking about that um, you might not be aware of, and that will help you to meet this difficulty of students overcoming their shyness and their quietness. And that is, there may be subtle lines of division in your class that you do not recognize that you are not aware of. And I was probably, I was very likely not aware of those dividing lines in my first year or two of being here. These dividing lines amongst the students will prevent them from speaking English and sharing about themselves openly. The lines can be based on what cities students are from. Students like to sit with people who are from their same hometowns and can speak their same hometown language, which will be different from Mandarin Chinese. They may sit with students who are from their same major programs. They may sit based on age. Um, freshmen and sophomores don't tend to mix and they may separate also based on gender. Boys and girls don't tend to mix as well. So to you, to a, to a teacher who's unfamiliar with Chinese schools and Chinese culture, to you it may just look like a homogenous room of students, but actually there are very subtle lines there that will be just as good as cement walls and prevent students from seeing each other, from getting to know each other, and preventing them from expressing themselves openly. In fact, they are rather shy and quiet and they are not the type to stand up and stretch a hand out for a handshake and meet their classmates as American University students might. So that's a really important part of your job is to create these the friendly conditions where they can get to know each other. So one thing I spend five or ten minutes doing for my first few sets of classes is I would ask, I would, the first class I, in, I called names and I asked where is everybody from and what's everybody's major. And then in the second class, I asked them to do that themselves. Tell us again, what's your name, where you're from, what's your major? And I've gone through that process a few times, and you might think it's silly, and some students might feel like this is silly and this is a waste of time, but actually, they are going to become more open in the class on account of this, and they will start to make friends, and they will start to like your class more, and they won't really know why. But the reason is because you have taken about five or ten minutes at the beginning of every class to repeatedly go through those introductions and say, oh, really, you're, you know, you're from Yunnan province. Oh, you're from Shanghai. Oh, you're from, you know, that small city that most of us don't know. Tell us about that place. And doing that at, for the first few minutes of class for the first few weeks, the first few classes is really important to do and that will really help things move along. Doing some great ice breaking games, some get to know you games are also really useful for this and the students will like to play some games where they can get to know the other students, where they're from, what's their name, what are their hobbies, do they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they will be very curious and interested about that. But always keep in mind that you do not want to embarrass the students. That will move you quite quickly in the opposite direction you want to be going. You have to set the professional tone, the respectful tone for the class right in the very beginning. And when students know that is in place, in the future classes they will be coming back excited to do more of those types of games where they have a chance to express themselves to their classmates. So that's it for today. I hope some of that information helped you. Those are some things that came to my mind recently when I started classes. And if you have any questions or comments or some ideas of your own that you'd like to share, please post them down below. I'm sure we can all benefit by having an interaction in the comments section. And 
I welcome you to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to make more videos like this. And don't forget to check out jollywell.com because I do like to write and I have a lot of interesting writings about what it's like to be in China and some of my daily life experiences.